Okay, so it's almost Happy Easter, so I would say Happy Easter to you, um, but I'm trying to think, maybe by the time you get this, it will be Easter, or the day after Easter, regardless. So, the mystery at Carlsbad's Tavern is coming to an end. Now, some of you may say, well, that's a sad occasion, and I think it's the direct opposite of that uh, because this is real life and it's not just entertainment so on my perspective is that my work essentially is done and what work is that you ask well I get cases all the time for the past 10 years maybe 20 People say, hey, can you look at it? Yes, no, whatever it is, some pro bono, not very many anymore. Uh, some paid clients, some from Hollywood, some from law enforcement. And somehow I make it all work. You know, I, I find time, I look at it, it's what I do. Just like you, it's your you know, job or your hobby. It's This is my job and my hobby. So it's, you know, it's what I do. With that being said, I'm coming to an end, a conclusion, a resolution. I've looked at this long enough that I think I've figured out what took place. And as I said in the last video, I think it, it was a key clue. There was something there that I missed. I went back, uh, re-interviewed some people, and I zeroed in on it, confirmed it. And that did it for me. You're still not getting that. I know. You're mad at me. Hey, a um, couple more little tweaks I have to do, but I will release it. And most importantly, i am got to tell the family of Brenda Condon first. You know, at least the two that I've been dealing with, which is Todd, the son, and uh, Iris, the sister. And they can fill in the rest of the family. You know, I don't have to call every single person and say, hey, this is what Detective Ken Maines, who works on cold cases, and uh, this is what he thinks. Okay, and that, that's it. So as that's coming to an end, um, I want to do this little Q&A. So I put something out on Facebook about, hey, if you have questions in this case, uh, write them down here and I will do my best to try to answer them. So here I am and I'm going to try to answer them. So I'm going to use my little phone here and I'm going to go down through the questions. The first question here is from Brian Cower. If bar patron Ron stated that there was another bartender there with Brenda, do you know who this person might be? No. Now I tried tracking this down very hard into the best of my knowledge and I'm very confident in saying there was no other bartender there with Brenda. Remember in the last video we went through her timeline so she worked Monday night and Tuesday night when she disappeared. And both nights she was alone. Um, Scott Michael, the whole equipment on the mountain thing, the slip track on the machine overnight really throws a flag. Would cadaver dogs be able to pick something up after 33 years? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Now, the second part of your question is if they dug her and buried her very deep. That I don't know. I, I don't know how deep they go. I've used cadaver dogs in the search for uh, Don Miller. And there was a couple other. Me and Trooper Brian Wakefield used cadaver dog for another case I don't remember it was I think it was Cindy song 
if I remember right. We checked a property. Anyway, uh, to answer your question, I don't know, but um, I could would surely find out before I would use them. The cadaver dog that, <clears throat> excuse me, I used on the Don Miller case alerted to where the suspect told me the night previous, hey, this is where we buried her. The cadaver dog that we brought in, let him out of the truck, he goes around, da da da, and he whoop, goes right to that spot, sits down. That was his alert. That case had been since 1992, and this was in 2007, so a couple of decades removed, and it's still alerted there. So I hope that answers that question. Kim Ann says, would clothes still be visible after 33 years? I don't think so, um, but buttons sure would be. Um, Amy Carson. There were also two large sediment ponds with plastic liner built when they was working. A family member worked out there at the time. He said if someone wanted to hide a body, they could have dug, buried the body, and built the pond on top. Certainly. What about the back door being open? This is by Regina Bellotti. What about the back door being open? I think that that is false. Okay, I'm not 100% sure, but I've only heard it from one person. And then when I contacted that person, they did not contact me back. Nobody else had said it. The bar would have been freezing cold in February. Um, so I don't put any stock into that. Have you found out where the dumpsters were? Yes, the dumpsters were out front. Okay. Scott Kirby. Do you view Ron as a strong suspect? Yes, I do. Elise Bond. Nope, no question there. That was not a question. Holly Pros. Do you think it is a 100% certain she did not have an extra pair of shoes with her? No. No, I'm not 100% certain of that. In fact, I think she did have another pair of shoes with her. Uh, John Parnay, could she possibly have been scheduled to waitress or assumed she was that night so she wore her boots, then found out she was bartending so she changed into sneakers due to the anti-fatigue mats? No, I think she knew she was bartending. Jen Miller, what are the chances that this was a setup to have Brenda disappear over drug-related issues? I don't think there's any chance of that. Now, before, I maybe would have, I did entertain that, but not now. Did Greg set this up? No, he did not. Did Carl know? Boy, that's a lot of questions. Didn't Carl mention Brenda and Greg's condolences? Yes, he did. Um, and I mentioned it to Carl, and he explained it. Um, that's that. Here's this one that I covered yesterday in the fact versus fiction. Carl's girl, this is from Louise Young. Carl's girlfriend at that time colored her hair the same color as Brenda, and she called off this night. Brenda was called in. Yes, Carl knows he more than he will ever tell. Well, maybe he does, but the facts remain that Carl's girlfriend colored her hair five months previous to this. And I've confirmed that. So, and even if she did it the day of, I mean, I, anyway. Zoe Glover, what are your firm thoughts on why she is not in the witness protection program? All right, Zoe, this is for you. Uh, I've put somebody in a witness protection program before. At least I assisted in it myself and DEA agent Tim Crowley uh, was working a case together and we we went I watched him do it and I went through the steps with him so I know what it entails uh, and it isn't somebody just 
pulling you out of a bar and never saying goodbye to your family and, and just disappearing. And that, that's not how it works. It's a lot of process. Um, and the amount of weight that Greg was moving uh, is nowhere even close to what a witness protection relocation person would be. Not to mention the resources that the state police, quasi Spring Township, the law enforcement's not going to waste their time investigating if somebody's in a witness protection program. Now, I know you're looking at me and you're saying, well, maybe the DEA or the FBI didn't tell them. Th that comes from a lot of movies. Now, yes, has that ever happened in the past? I am sure it has. Has it ever happened in Belfont, Pennsylvania? My guess is no. And there's a reason for that. I know it didn't happen. I'm 100% sure that that did not happen. That's not how it operates. It's not the procedures that are taken. None of it. Okay? So that's why I'm very adamant that she's not in the witness protection program. Was Brenda a smoker? No, she was not. Okay, Lauren Reese, episode three or four, Brenda's sister went to the bar. As an employee with a missing employee, don't you think he would have shut down the bar and helped the investigation? No, I don't. Police, first off, thought she ran away. That was the initial thought. The police didn't shut down the bar, you know. They thought, just like Carl. Now, number one, one thing I think I've learned about Carl in the short time and conversations I've had with him and the research that I've done on him is he's about money. And he's a businessman. And I think it would take an act of God for him to shut down a bar. Especially, now, if Brenda was murdered in there and she's laying in there, and she, well, he wouldn't have a choice, but then, yeah, maybe. But she is missing. They don't know whether foul play occurred. There isn't like there's blood laying around anywhere. So it's business as usual. Was DNA testing around? It was around, yes. But it was definitely in its infancy. Kim Ann. Unfortunately, she wasn't reported missing until Friday. Now that's... That's fiction. I went through this yesterday. Brenda Condon was reported missing on February 27th, around 7 o'clock, 7.30 that night. Firm, confirmed, end of story. Okay? Angela Schmidt. Any connection to the girl murdered close by a few years after? I'm not sure what girl you're talking about. There's been several missing people or um, homicides in the State College Belfont area, I think. I don't know. I, I didn't see anything to me that relates and connects anything. But I'm not saying that that's an improbability. Bobby Payton, Pittman. Did Carl's girlfriend switch shifts with Brenda that night? I had no indication of that. And this is from Helena Snyder. Did you get to interview her? And what's her name? Well, I'm not going to give you her name, her full name. I did not interview her. I did call. I did reach out to a couple people that knew her, asking them to tell her to call me. And it never occurred, never happened. Uh, her first name is Gail. And, well, I think her real first name is Naomi. But, anyhow, that's her. Bill Brigman, I would read it, but you wrote a book. I can't read everything that you wrote there, buddy. April Maines, not related because she spells it with an E. Did the police take any pictures of behind or around the bar? No. No, they did not. 
at least I didn't see any. I haven't heard of any. And when I talked to the retired police officers, they didn't mention it. And I certainly asked them. So their answer was either no or they don't recall. April also asked, was there a bloody towel? And if so, was there been any DNA ran on it? Okay, you can't run DNA, number one. Uh, DNA is what it is. You can extract DNA from whatever it is, in this case, a towel, and analyze it. I heard that from Bonnie, as you guys did. Nobody I talked to ever confirmed it. I can't find any account of any bloody towel, tissue, anything related to this case. I just can't find it. So, you know, I, I guess I'm going to say that it's not true. It's my guess. It remains again. Do the police have any of the jewelry that that truck drive her had from his victims. I, I don't have an answer for that. I didn't look into that case. Phone records of the tavern. Did Brenda call anyone that night? I don't know if they got the phone records from that, but I know from history is that old, when I look at old cases and old telephone records, you could only see long distance calls that were placed. I mean, going out. Local calls, calls coming in, um, I, you, they're not there. So I, I don't know whether they were done or not. Sue Gummo, did you talk to the dangerous drug dealer that had a snake on his arm? If so, thoughts. I did not because he is deceased. Lynette Bowling Cromley, was the mafia involved? I can say 100% no. Wanda McDonald. Even the cops don't have it right. Sorry, worked there two weeks. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I recall two nights being mentioned. Also, why Greg return every year and cry on Brenda's birthday? They say you always return to crime scene for a memory. If you thought she took off why did he keep returning okay a couple of things that i want to undress here undress and address one when you say they always say who's they okay are you talking about um, veterinarians talking about bar owners or are you talking about detectives because i don't always say that um i know many people that have killed and never returned to the scene ever again so, Greg is damned if you do, damned if you don't, you know. And whoever said that he went there every year and cried? Now, I did read an article that his ex-girlfriend said that he went there once and he was emotional. Okay, I mean, people grieve differently. So, sometimes people look too far and too much when they have a suspect in mind. Now, Wanda, I don't know you from Adam, right? But I can tell from this question that you have your mind made up that Greg is guilty. Am I right? Okay. So when you have a bias like that, you try to make things fit. Well, he's guilty and that's why this happened. You can't do that. Trust me, I know it's hard. I made those mistakes Early on when I would start investigating. Make things fit. I had a guy one time. I thought he killed his daughter. And he got the wrong date of a tattoo of her death. And I zeroed in on it. I was like, ah, this is it. He doesn't want to be reminded of the day that he killed her. So he put the wrong date of death on there. That's making it fit. The reality is he's just an idiot. And... I should have known that. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Was there a silent partner with Crazy Carl? And if so, who was it? I, I've heard the rumor. 
Um, I followed that up and I couldn't find anything. Doesn't mean it's not true. Carl owned a lot of bars, a lot of things. I asked Carl about it. He told me no. He had no silent partner. Um, so I'm going to take his word for it. If he said yes, I did. Doesn't change anything for me about the investigation into Brenda's disappearance. Shelly Cloakey. Maybe I missed something, but I'm confused about her car being left in the parking lot. If she was to work the next day, where did the other employees think she was? Well, they thought she was there. You have to go back to the fact and fiction and see that a bartender did relieve her. He saw that she wasn't there, car was in parking lot. He set in the motion to call police. Also, didn't Greg wonder why she never came home after her shift? He went to sleep. Okay, he was out, Greg was out with his brother and his wife to, I believe, the first where I've been, it's a bar in State College, till around two. He got home, he goes to bed, he wakes up, she's not there. So, yeah, he, he certainly wondered, but for whatever reason, he wasn't incredibly concerned in the morning, he went to work. Uh, it's not like you have cell phones and you can check on each other. You know, maybe he called the house a couple times. She don't answer, but maybe she's out running around. He, he doesn't know. But when she doesn't show up for work that night, then the wheels are set in motion and he tells people to call police. Patty Feather, if she was living with Greg at the time, why didn't he question her whereabouts sooner? I think I just covered that. Carla Fink, I'm only going to read part of this because you wrote a book. Okay, since the ex-wife girlfriend is Gail and Gail isn't the pregnant girl that was sent back to Utah, will you be speaking with the pregnant girl that was sent back to Utah? No. No. It has no bearing on the disappearance of Brenda Condon. So there's no reason, you know, Carl's domestic situation has no bearing on Brenda Condon. Okay. Carl's business activities there at the bar, or if he was sleeping with Brenda, then yes, I would be looking into Carl's domestic activities a little more. But I have no indication of any of that. Because he sends a, a pregnant underage girl that he gets pregnant out to Utah to live. And yes, I did read the, the transcripts of that uh, case. It, yeah, it speaks, may speak to Carl's character. So I certainly looked into that. But there's no reason for me to talk to her um, at this at this time especially, about Brenda because it's completely unrelated. Now, I would talk to her and all of Carl's exes, and I did speak, or try to speak to some of them because you want to know, hey, what was he like? Did he say anything about Brenda? And in that aspect, yes, I would have reached out to her. I have no need to anymore. Shayna Rebick, would the bartender lock the doors before starting to clean up at the end of the night? No, I thought that as well. But after talking to several bartenders that work there, the answer is no. They would start cleaning up even while customers are there. They would even do the money while customers are still there. Were the doors unlocked while they did that? Yes. Julia Daniels. In general, when a cool case is finally solved, does the killer most often turn out to be someone who has killed before? Or is it a one-off? Um, in my experience, it's usually a one-off. But that doesn't mean that, that they didn't kill before or and somebody missed it. So, do you think someone hired somebody to kill Brenda? This is from Joe Hudson. My answer is no. 
Dan Lurch, has unidentified patron number three been identified? Yes, we identified him. I believe so. You have to go back and watch one of my episodes where you must have missed that one. Sue Low Lowry Terrell. I don't understand why Carl doesn't know who his employees were. How did he pay them? Didn't he have a time clock? He just took their word for it then and how long they worked. That's crazy. Listen, he he's 76 years old and he's trying to remember something from 1991, 33 years ago. I mean, I don't expect him to know everybody. I did expect him to know a name or two, but I couldn't even get that from him. Yes, I'm sure there's records. He has records somewhere uh, in his storage. Um, so he, he knows who they were. He just can't remember them. Or he doesn't want to tell me who they were, one or the other. The Forgotten Cases. People have disregarded the idea that Brenda could be buried under the newly installed fuel tanks at Greg Sunoco Station. Can anyone confirm that there was not construction or tanks being installed in February 91? Um, I think this is a real, real reach. I've heard people say this before. Um, first of all, you would have to think that Greg was involved, number one. I do not. Being involved meaning he actually killed Brenda or had somebody kill Brenda. And then burying him on his property, burying Brenda. I think it's a real, real long shot. I think it's just, yes, there was construction going on around that time. I could not pinpoint the exact date of it. But right now where we where I am with this case, if somebody came and knocked on my door from a construction company and showed me and said, um, on February 25th, 1991, we poured concrete at the Greg Sunoco. That would not even raise my eyebrows. Now, I know that's crazy, right? You guys are thinking, oh, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know anything. Wait to what I'm going to have to tell you on the next episode. And then maybe, you know, if you still want to call me an idiot, then that's up to you. But Greg Sunoco has nothing to do with this case. Okay, she's not buried there. Last one here from Sue Gummo again. Who knew what to draw of the last patrons if there was no Brenda to tell them? That's a very good question, Sue. And it's other patrons that were in the establishment at different times. That's how they got the sketch. And that is how the sketch is kind of screwed up. You remember the sketch of the three faces, right? And everyone assumed that it was three different people because they kind of look different. Well, the number one and number two are the same person. And the sketches are different because different people are given their recollection of what that person looked like. That's how it is. Now, the only one that remains consistent is sketch number three, who I'm very confident that we identified. So that is it for our, your question and answer session. I think I've gotten everything covered from the last episode and this episode, meaning I hope all the questions are answered. Now the big question still remains. Who did it, Kenny? 
I am going to tell you, I believe, the who, what, why, and the bonus, how. I think I've made sense enough of all the pieces of evidence to say this is exactly what happened. Now, again, I can't be 100% certain. The only way you're 100% certain, you are not even 100% certain if there's a witness there. The only way is if there's video. And unfortunately, we don't have that. But due to observations of certain people, of certain things, um, facts, I think I'm able to deduce exactly what happened. And again, I'm going to tell the family first, and then I will tell you. And then I'm done with this case, okay? Now, I will always, always be there for the family. That's how I am in every cold case I've ever worked. If you don't believe me, look at some of the old cold cases and call up the family. You know, call Gail Matthews' sister, Julie. Uh, she'll tell you. Call up Don Miller's mom, Sandy. She'll tell you. You know, it's just... Or, or the coils. I mean, there's just so many people. And I just stay in touch with them. You know, maybe I don't reach out to them as much as I should because I'm just a, more of a loner, you know, more of a private person. But when they reach out to me, hey, we heard this. Could this be something? I always get back to them. Uh, and I always listen. That's the most important thing. I get so irritated when they tell me, hey, we've called the current police officer on this case or whatever, and they don't get back to us. Man, that irritates me. These families have been through enough. And because it doesn't affect you, you just, whatever. Westmoreland County Police Department working on the Coyle case. Horrible treatment of the family. So... Anyhow, I'll always be there for the Condons, uh, for the Coons, which is Brenda's uh, maiden name, whatever they need, you know. But I have to move on. Did this case pro bono? I'm, I'm very confident in my assessment, and I'm going to present it. You know, people ask me all the time, well, you know, did you solve the case? Well, my question back is, well, and, and I'll get that in this. Well, did you solve the case? Well, what's solved to you? Am I going to make an arrest in this case? No, I'm not. I can't. Um, but what I found out with all these families that I've worked with is that solving a case sometimes doesn't mean a person's going to get arrested. That's always icing on the cake. It doesn't mean that, you know, the person's going to get convicted. It doesn't mean that the person's going to get the death penalty. Solving a case for me is being able to sit down with the family. This is what happened to your daughter or your son. And most importantly, why? You can't just arbitrarily. Now, amateurs do this all the time. Well, I think John Doe killed your daughter. From my research, that's what I see. And you got to say why. Okay? It's just like a college term paper. You know, you, you have to back it up with facts. Now, in my case, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, okay, Todd, Iris, Condon family, Brenda was murdered. Or Brenda ran away because of X, Y, and Z. And this person is responsible because of X, Y, and Z. Now, what I think happened was this. Brenda did this. And the reason I believe she went in there is because of this. She went to turn off the light. And this. You back up everything that you say with work experience, training, facts. 
past proclivities. All that comes into play. But you got to be able to support your opinion with facts. I get so angry at these quote-unquote amateur detectives sometimes because they ruin people's names. And, they, and you notice, like, I never put out a person's last name. Okay? You don't ruin somebody. And these amateur detectives do that all the time with no evidence. Because in their amateur mind, this person did it. The hoodie guy from the Idaho murders. He did it. He just looked suspicious. So let's go and ruin his life on social media. It's a joke. And the people that do that are a disgrace to not only true crime, to which I'm a part of, but in the human race in general. Now, see, you're getting me fired up talking about this subject of amateur detectives again. Now, there are some great ones. There are some that I dealt with that well, I wish they were, they were on the force. But there's other ones who do it for the clicks, do it for the money, do it for the sensationalism, do it for the fame, whatever they those idiots do it for. Me, I'm very transparent. I do this because I love it. That's what I do. It's my hobby. It's my life. It's my DNA. I do TV shows. I write books. I did it for a living. I'm doing it now for a living. It's, it's all I know. To me, it's like what Apollo said to Rocky in Rocky IV. You know, without some damn war to fight, without some battle, the warrior might as well be dead. That's how I feel. You know, about cases. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this question and answer session. Again, I'm kind of sad in a way that this is coming to an end, meaning this these videos. Um, but there there will be others. I'm happy that this is coming in to an end, obviously, for the Condon family and the community. And listen, maybe it isn't coming to an end for you. Because just because I say this is what happened, I, I guarantee there's going to be people that say, no, that's, that's not, you know. And you have that opinion. I don't care about that opinion, um, but you'll have it. And it's nothing against you. I just don't like comments. I don't like opinions that much. It's just how I am, okay? But ultimately, this is going to be, it could be solved, but the police may not act on it for whatever reason, you know, and I've come to the conclusion that I am not going to present this to the police. That's not my job. I'm going to leave that to the family. But as Todd and I have talked, um, he wants me to be there with him and I have no problem, you know, being beside him. He, and he, he's a good man. And I would do that for any good man, um, not just in a case that I'm working. But I digress. For me, I think the case is solved and I will move forward after these next couple of videos. So I won't say my goodbyes yet, but there'll be more videos, there'll be more cases. And all these new viewers from Belfont and Milesburg and everything, uh, go back in my past library and check out other cases. If you like this, go and look at the Jennifer Hill case where justice was served. Not enough time. You know, the guy killed this girl, only got 10 years. Um, but go look at that one. There's a whole playlist on it. The Jennifer Hill murder. I'll try to link that somehow at the end of this. I don't know how all this works all the time. But anyhow, that's what we're going to do. Stay tuned until probably one, maybe two more episodes. Depending. Who knows. But this the next episode is the one you're not going to want to miss. Because I'm going to lay it all out. 
I'm going to tell you who, what, when, why, how, and the reasonings behind it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Mains out. Thank you.